On March 1, 2022, the Philippines marked a milestone in the pandemic. New normal na Metro Manila. Sa muling pagbubukas ng ekonomiya. Under this new normal, the Duterte administration says masks are to stay on, proof of vaccination is required for adults, quarantine is no longer required for the fully vaccinated, and all establishments can go back to operating at full capacity. But in many ways, scenes like this make it seem like we're back to, well, normal. So, is the pandemic over? Well, in the Philippines, no, we're, we're still in the midst of an epidemic. We haven't done the hard work of vaccinating to a very high level of our population, especially the vulnerable. No? Without vaccination, kasi we're probably just in between surges. And we cannot sustain the low level with the current level of vaccination that we have. It's too late to eradicate COVID-19. Instead, Experts say we need to learn how to live with the virus. In figuring out what that might mean, you probably have heard this word thrown around a lot, endemic. But what does that mean for COVID-19? The definition usually would say it's a persistent presence of disease over a geographical area. That's it. We should probably follow these three criteria for what endemic would mean for COVID-19. And that's persistently low cases, acceptable deaths, and proof that there is some good immunity in the population. When we talk about living with the virus, what endemic looks like for COVID-19 isn't set in stone. We can think of at least three possible scenarios for what endemic might look like. The first is elimination. It's almost near zero. It's never quite gone, but it's almost it's like it's negligible. Then there's cohabitation. And cohabitation is we're looking at some some breakthrough infections, but that's manageable. But there's also conflagration. There is a kind of endemic that we're living with it, but it's also causing disruption. It's like a, every so often there's a storm, right? And it's disruptive. It's going to be like that. And in that scenario, it, you can birth new variants, new versions of COVID that could probably cause a pandemic. It's like a forest fire that's burning until it doesn't burn anymore. And when that happens, we're, we're just a step away from going back into an epidemic or a pandemic. What we all hope to achieve is this type of endemic, which is not disruptive. But what we're gunning for, which is the more realistic type of endemic is the cohabitation one. But personally, I think we should also do the work so that we go for elimination. While reaching that state will entail the evolution of the virus becoming less severe over time, there are steps that both governments and people need to take to reach an endemic scenario. One future is unknown. We can wait for the virus to evolve by itself no? into one that can become endemic, meaning lower transmissibility than Omicron, but with the same level of low severity. But there's nothing we can do to influence it, short of controlling transmission. But another future is, is something that we can do about, no? which is vaccinate most of our population, vaccinate the vulnerable, so that we are able to build a very high immunity wall across all regions of the country and also across all age groups. Both vaccination and prior infection have given the Philippines a so-called immunity wall that looks like this. With the mix of vaccines used and the number of people that have had COVID-19, Filipinos still face the risks of outbreaks. The easiest way to ensure a future that is less disruptive to the virus is to make this wall higher and stronger. In terms of actions that we can take, the easiest, of course, is vaccination. It's very cost-effective. No? You can protect individuals, no? most, most of the population. And that isn't the only way. While more Filipinas need to get vaccinated against COVID-19, other health interventions can still save lives. The Philippines needs to build up the capacity to provide critical care in cities and provinces outside of Metro Manila. New antiviral treatments should be readily available to those who need it the most. Strong surveillance systems will be crucial to detect when cases or hospitalizations are rising again. And when it comes to the environment, both masking and ensuring good ventilation has been proven to help stop the spread of the virus. We still have a long way to go before COVID-19 is endemic in the Philippines. 
but health experts also emphasized that there are steps that we can take, so we reach that future together. When we're talking about the endemic state, we, we shouldn't think of it as endemic at the national level. Some regions, provinces, or cities will get to that state first before others. So when you say endemic, you have to ask the questions of endemic where, but also endemic for whom. If we do the work of keeping transmission low and prepare for a future when the virus is endemic, can we go back to the way things were before the pandemic disrupted our lives? We shouldn't. COVID-19 has exposed long ignored vulnerabilities in our world and left scars for generations to come. The virus isn't the last or the worst nature has to offer either. What worries me the most, I think, is us going back to an old normal. The old normal is what brought us to this particular situation that we're in.